I am an enormous advocate of exercise. There are a few things that are as insulin sensitizing as exercise is because you cannot have, in fact, Ben, it's interesting. You mentioned levels and now with the, the rise of the CGM, and the, 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 the wearing of continuous glucose monitors, anyone who's listening to this, who's worn a CGM has noticed that they will go work out. If they hit it hard, boy, their glucose levels just have this big, steady climb. One of the reasons, in fact, the entire reason it's climbing is because of changes in hormones, because again, hormones control fuel use in the body that's reflected in the glucose in the blood. But this is also a perfect example of when glucose and insulin get disconnected. Exercise is the perfect example because insulin wants to store energy. Well, that is antithetical to exercise because exercise wants to use energy. We need to be mobilizing energy and burning energy. Insulin abhors that. And thus, during exercise, it's no surprise that insulin plummets. If someone were wearing a continuous glucose monitor on this arm and a continuous insulin monitor on this arm, may that day come sooner than later, um, significant technological hurdles to that. But nevertheless, they would see glucose climbing and insulin dropping. And it's because insulin knows this is not my time. I'll come up later today when you eat and recover and I'll help you recover. But right now, I mean, the body, it's always this dynamic system that maybe the simplest way of explaining metabolism in the body is breaking and building, breaking and building. And when we're exercising, we're breaking. Insulin can't break. It doesn't break. It only helps build or it, and it protects what's being built. That's actually the more accurate way of saying it when it comes to muscle. But nevertheless, glucose comes up in large part because insulin gets out of the way. But at the same time, other hormones that are insulin opposites are climbing during exercise, most especially cortisol, epinephrine or, or adrenaline, and glucagon. And then other ones like growth hormone and IGF-1, especially growth hormone, these first four hormones that I mentioned, cortisol, adrenaline, glucagon, um, growth hormone, they are all insulin antagonists when it comes to glucose. Every one of these hormones stimulates glucose production and release from the liver into the blood driving the elevated glucose because they're all to a degree, well, growth hormone is a bit of an interesting one, but they want to mobilize energy. Uh, they want to start moving things into the body to be used for energy. And, and, and so we have this increase in glucose during exercise while insulin has come down. And so, but one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why I'm such a big advocate of exercise, in addition to that, if someone's performing exercises that are going to failure in some way or another, the intensity is sufficient, then they're getting you know, a strong signal for muscle hypertrophy, which, which you and much of your audience, honest to goodness, knows more about than I do. Um, but more muscle mass means more of the tissue that consumes most of the glucose in the body. So when someone eats, if you and I were to go eat a bagel right now, and we're wearing our CGMs, yep, boom, our glucose has come up, and then it starts to come down. 80% of the reason the glucose starts to come down is because the glucose is being pulled into the muscle. So if someone has more muscle mass, they have more of this glucose sink. They have this very high metabolic rate organ that will gobble up much of the glucose from the blood. And the faster that glucose can come down, well, then the faster the insulin can come back down. And the longer a person is living a life with low insulin, the longer they're going to be insulin sensitive. Now, of course, insulin does help build, which is, and so we want it to be going up sometimes. And, and so like everything else in the body, like mTOR and like growth hormone and IGF-1, we need these periods of an anabolism or building, and then we need periods of breaking. 